Good evening. Welcome to the September 27th meeting of the Falmouth Conservation Commission. Our esteemed colleague is under the weather tonight. I will be channeling my inner chairwoman tonight, so <laughs> bear with me. Uh, please silence all electronic devices. If you're going to have a conversation, please have it outside the room and down the hall. Um, if during your presentation you leave the podium, please take the microphone with you as we are being broadcast by FCTV. If you're here to speak on an application and we encourage you to do so, please step up to the podium, give your name for the record, and use the microphone. First up, minutes from September 20th. Anybody have anything? No, not everyone at once, please. I reviewed the minutes and I didn't have any comments. I would move to approve them as presented. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Other business. Uh, the Boy Scout Troop 40 requesting to camp at Deer Pond September 29th to October 1st. Yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, we were contacted by Alden Thomas, he's the Senior Patrol Leader for Troop 40, and they would like to um, camp at Deer Pond this weekend. They do this annually. Um, we have a little set of conditions, you know, clean up, leave it as you found it. We've already alerted MES so that they're aware that somebody will be camping out there. Um, so we would recommend that you approve their request. I'll move to and well accept uh, staff's recommendation. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody want to talk? Didn't seem so. Oh, okay. Unanimous. So moved. Aye. Don't need that. Next up, request for co uh, continuance under a determination of applicability. Lynn Horsley, 54 Pheasant Lane, East Falmouth, Mass, for permission to upgrade the existing septic system by installing a new Title V sewage disposal system. Ms. McKay. Yes, Mr. Chairman, we are recommending a negative two under the state and the bylaw with the resource area boundaries no, not concerned. Oh, I'm on Sug Snug Harbor. Oh, I'm sorry, I skipped one. Um, I believe, yeah, mm -hmm. sorry about that. Mm -hmm. We have this one. Oh, Pheasant Lane, uh, request continuance to October 11th. Sorry. So moved. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Next up. Now it's not over. <laughs> we ready? Mm-hmm. Dana Caledonia, 85 Snug Harbor Lane, West Falmouth, Mass, for permission to construct small additions, remove steps, and install native shrub plantings. Again, Mr. Chairman, we are recommending a negative two under the state and the bylaw with the resource area boundaries not confirmed. So moved. Second. And just a question, this had an enforcement order on it for illegal cutting within 100 feet of salt. Marsh. I will double check with Mark on that and see if that has been. Um, well, and the only reason I say that it's, it's been over three years of okay. the health of the plants. I know they've never been planted. Okay. Um, and they also cut illegally on Mr. Austin's property, which was planted and did p get compliance. So I don't know why. I'll have Mark check on the, okay. the status of the enforcement, and if not, we will reissue it. Well, I think, well, and now he's adding more. So I think maybe, again, if you're already. What? No, 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 no. I mean, if I, you I, I just, I, I, he's asking to add, add, put additions on. He cleared over 100 feet of salt marsh area between two stone walls and put sod lawn in. Okay. Um, like I said, Maury, uh, thank you, Tom. Mark reviewed this. This was Mark's recommendation. Okay. Well, let's just um, check the enforcement. Yeah, I can check okay. the enforcement. Perfect. And then yeah, if it I, I got over, Mark hadn't mentioned anything about any enforcement orders there. Can okay. you identify yeah. yourself as a worker? Oh, sorry, yeah, I'm Tom Bunker with BSS Design. Uh, it was 85 Snug Harbor? I was going to say, if it's is it the two stone walls. Oh, there, there are no two stone walls there that I. Is it the t one with the terrace? Yep. Is that, I don't think that's 85. What number is that? What? That is. Uh, 
announcement. Anyway. Oh, Dana but, is at the very end. Dana's at the very Perfect. end. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. My my bad. But as soon as I saw Kel, <laughs> like, I know. Be well, you know what? Now that I'm on that, yeah, okay. I should check now that now, now that you're on it, I will make a note to check the one down the road. Absolutely. Anybody else? No, sir. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Kathleen Steinberg, 71 Robinson Road, Falmouth, Mass, for permission to pump and remove the existing cesspool along with unsuitable soils and install a new Title V sewage disposal system. Jen. We're recommending a negative two under the state and the bylaw with the resource area boundaries not confirmed. So moved. Second. Uh -huh. Anybody have anything? No. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Next up, James Burrell, 25 Worcester Court of Thomas Mass, for permission to raise, R-A-Z-E, the existing dwelling, construct a four-bedroom house with an attached garage, deck, landings, install a stone driveway, asphalt berm, dry wells, retaining wall, and the associated clearing, excavating, grading, and landscaping. Jen? Yes, ma uh, Mr. Chairman, we are recommending a negative two under the state and the bylaw with the resource area boundaries not confirmed. So moved. Second. Anybody have anything? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Um, just, just out of curiosity, why does this not rise to a level of water condition? Given the scope of work, it's just in a land subject to coastal storm flowage. That's why, Thank Courtney. Thank you very much. Okay. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Next up, 300 you? Committee, care of Alex Owell, 526 Quaker Road, North Falmouth, Mass, for permission to con continue phragmatic control covering a 30 by 40 foot area. An adjacent spread as approved under an expired order of conditions, number DEP 25-3684, using a professional licensed applicator. Jen? Yes, Mr. Chairman, we are recommending a negative two in the state and the bylaw with the resource area boundaries not confirmed. So moved. Second. Is this primarily, uh, Just maintenance. Going in and yeah. controlling of your isolated stuff. Correct. So for the most part, this is pretty well controlled. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. No. Aye. aye. So moved. Next up, Michael and Cynthia George, 45 Dusty Miller Road, Falmouth, Mass, for permission to clear a temporary path to provide access to install approximately 75 linear feet of fence, eastern red cedar, and bayberry plantings. Jen. Yes, Mr. Chairman, we are recommending a positive under the bylaw for the stockade fence, and that is because it is in the 25 foot offset, uh, your 25 foot offset to the velocity zone, so you do consider that a velocity zone. Um, we are recommending a negative two under the state and the bylaw for the bayberry plantings and a positive two, um, a positive three, excuse me, for the cedar trees only because we don't feel the cedar trees are going to survive in order to plant anything in that area. And more, if you want to take a look, I put the pictures right in front of um, Jamie. It's pretty exposed. It's a pretty harsh area. They, Mark and I discussed it. If they were to put them in, they'd only be about three feet in height, and we don't. Yeah, they're just going to get fried yeah. out there. They're so we start about that big. Yeah, we would probably uh, they just won't survive. So we're just recommending um, the negative two for the bayberry plantings and a positive for everything else. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. We have anyone that would like to comment? Yep, please. He's up to the podium. Ms. McKay, could, could you explain to me exactly what we just did? So they'll have to come in and if they choose, If they choose to pursue the fence, they will need to come in with a notice to, to ask you guys to put the fence in. As well as the cedars? As well as the cedars. Okay. Um, we just don't feel the cedars are going to survive. We've talked to the applicant's representative. Um, 
Teresa Sprague from Blue Flax Design. She was unable to attend tonight, and, and she was okay with the staff's recommendation. Um, we usually never, or this board usually never allows a stockade-type fence within a velocity zone. You've seen. Um, I understand that. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure it was clear that yeah. they were going to have to refile. Yeah, we'll let them know. Okay, thank you. Yep, that's fine. Or understand that left. even if they refile with a notice that the history of us ever allowing a stockade fence in a V zone is negative. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. Um, you're recommending that the uh, you go ahead with the Bayberry? Correct. I, that's a really harsh location. Mm -hmm. to, that's why we don't think the trees are going to survive, but the Bayberry no, no, might have I, a chance. No, it is a harsh location. Oh, I yeah. live in that area. And I don't even see where Bayberry is going to survive. Whatever you put there, you know, it's, it's um, there are low bush type things that will survive. I hate to say it, but uh, things like Rosa Rugosa does very well in that kind of area, even though mm -hmm. it's a non a non plant. We have you have um, allowed bayberry type plants in in this a long racing beach in the past, so well, yeah, I, they'll yeah, have I mean, to. I understand we've allowed it. I'm just making an yeah. observation that I really. It's a harsh really environment. It absolutely, ability. absolutely, it's tough out there. That's it. Anybody else? Thank you. Good evening. My name is Nathaniel Stevens from McGregor Legier in Boston. We represent Jeff and Lisa Lydon, who live next door at 43 Dusty Miller Road. We sent, I, we sent you a letter on Monday, which was circulated, and I left copies on your, uh, at your chairs uh, this evening. And we would encourage the commission to issue, with due respect to the staff, a positive three, requiring a notice of intent for all the work on this property. We find that the plan accompanying the RDA is insufficient to determine what the resource areas are. If you turn to the plan with the RDA, there are only about there are two two lines that are marked on the plan. One is for coastal, is, is just for bank, and that line doesn't even continue up towards the corner of the lot where the where the work is proposed. There's this, um, yet yet when this when the Georges at 40, 45 Dusty Miller Road filed a notice of intent back in 2013 or 2012 to do work at this house. They provided a plan, a very detailed plan, and showed all the resource areas at that time. And Coastal Bank is shown to be much more extensive on that NOI plan than is shown on this RDA plan. We uh, attached this Exhibit A to our letter as a copy of that plan. The second line shown on the RDA plan is just Zone A, but no, sh no Zone B is shown. It's interesting that line also is not parallel to the coastal bank line, so it's not clear what resource area that actually applies to. Under the Falmouth Wetland Regulations, as you well know, it depends on the resource area. The resource area determines um, the width of the zone A and the zone B. More importantly, perhaps, and I think as identified by staff, the RDA plan leaves off land subject to coastal storm flowage and the velocity zone. We have uh, from the Falmouth GIS that shows approximately where the uh, velocity zone, I'm sorry, where the velocity zone and lands of coastal storm flowage extends on the property. It extends to and beyond the area of proposed work. Tom Corvo submitted this afternoon to the commission a plan by BSS Design. I'm not sure if that was circulated. People have that as well to, to, to show that, of course, under the Falmouth Wetland Regulations, there's an extra 25 feet added onto the velocity zone. So that extends again through uh, to and through through the work area, which is proposed. We believe the work should be subject to a notice of intent, so the commission can review the planting the planting plan in more detail, assure that the fence is indeed, or would if it's allowed, would be a, a wildlife habitat friendly fence, and we encourage the commission to reject the applicant's proposal to naturally re re allow the proposed access path. To, be, to naturally revegetate. We note that the a proposed access path, which requires cutting of vegetation, is almost equal in size to the area which would be replanted with the five shrubs and the three trees. As you know, an, an order of conditions would be a better a mechanism for regulating this work since it can be recorded and the commission can specify conditions 
and continuing, continuing conditions. This is particularly apt at this point because, as you may know, this property is for sale by the Georges. It's on the market. An order of conditions is further needed because on two occasions, the, the Georges have had their landscaper cut vegetation on the Leiden property. The first time was about one and a half years, years ago when the Leidens were not home and there was an extensive amount of vegetation cut. The Leidens, Leidens had to spend well over $20,000 to replace all that. More recently, this past August, there was a, a less of an incident because fortunately the Leid Leidens were home and were able to stop the George's landscapers before they got too far. <coughs> Excuse me. Notably, however, this was 10 days after the Leidens had specifically told the Georges that they did not have permission to have their landscapers go on their property. And they, so the Leidens have been forced to send a serve a no trespass notice on the Georges, and that's included in Exhibit C in our, in our letter. We conclude that the timing of the request for determination of applicability is really of no, really is for no other purpose but for spite. There's no concern about the resource areas and given the past history between the neighbors. Furthermore, the area proposed to be uh, restored or planted is in the undeveloped northeast corner of the site, whereas the house is on the southern, southern portion of the site. So it's far from the house. It's not an area where the inhabitants of 45 Dusty Miller Road would travel to. Furthermore, as explained in the RDA, there's a, a thicket of vegetation at least 40 feet wide uh, separating the area to be planted from the house area. And I also would like to make one correction or correct one misimpression that the RDA might create, might have uh, conveyed in that, <coughs> excuse me, the area to be planted was created by the abutters, uh, implying that it was created by our clients. The, the lights. That's not the case. If one looks at the aerial photography that Falmouth has done, and we include a picture in Exhibit D of our letter from 1975, you'll see that, that the area the area to be planted uh, was shown in, at that time. In fact, for many years, the owners and inhabitants of the Leidens property used, the, used this area and not the, the users, not the inhabitants of the George property. The Leidens were further surprised to see this R RDA because the Georges have not done much landscaping since they purchased this property about five years ago. Furthermore, there are no, no other fences on the property. There's no pool that needs to be protected, and there are no dogs that need to be contained. Furthermore, Mr. George has told Mr. Leiden, as you'll see in the email in Exhibit E of our letter, that, he, that the, this commission had ordered him to restore this area. To the best of our knowledge, that's not true. For these reasons, we request that the Commission issue a positive determination of applicability on all the work and require a notice of intent to be filed. Thanks. Mr. Borowald. Good evening. Tom Corowald, local contractor, also a former board member. Um, this is an RDA. Real hesitant about coming up and talking about it because it's an RDA. However, I appreciate staff's recognition of positive determinations on this. Um, the one thing that the last time I was in front of this board, I stood here with a full notice of intent for less than 200 square feet directly across the street that was in the V zone. It was done, I had administrative reviews prior to this and knew all about it. It was conditioned, and that's, that's the way that I believe this should be done. Only for the fact of the path going through is almost the same size as the property that's being planted. I'm not gonna, I'm grateful for all the time staff put in on this. It is a sliver, an arc, the size of your table that we're discussing. It literally is 34 feet long and 14 feet deep at the deepest point with boulders thrust among it that has been that way. I've known these people over 20 years. And it was shared property. However, the arrangement is now is, is what it is. But that has been like that for decades. And 
due to recent behaviors, it came to this point of a, literally a line being drawn through there. It, when you come from the 45 side, it looks very different than when you go on the 43 side. It's, it gives you two different impressions. And you can take from this what you will, but if you look at the composure and the stewardship of that property, and how that path as proposed up against the building, that's not gonna happen. You're not gonna carry buckets and wheelbarrows around, shower stall, boulders and all that. You're gonna cut a different path, a more direct path. Common sense would dictate that. And the resource areas are not marked on that. And that, a majority of that project is in a velocity. Mm -hmm. So I would ask the commission, I'm not saying he doesn't get to do it, but a notice of intent so as to put conditions on it and make sure that the plantings are viable after three years, the path is regrown appropriately. This is for sale. Someone else is gonna pick up and run with this. And if you don't have conditions on it, I believe that that could get just washed aside. And I would be remiss if I didn't put that out there. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, just to clarify, um, and if I didn't say this before, uh, we are not confirming the resource area boundaries in our recommendation. Um, but the staff will support any recommendation the board sees fit. Yeah, I, I, I actually have some concerns about this, just the clearing of land for an access to plant three trees or six bayberries or whatever. I, you know, the, the amount of damage being done there. I don't know. Overdo outdoes the constructive part of it, quite honestly. And, you know, I'm not, sh I gotta say, I'm sympathetic to the neighbor in this situation because I think uh, uh, an RDA doesn't enable us to condition this properly. And, and I think maybe we should recast the motion to just be, be positive all across the board. Well, the concern is that if the property is for sale and there is three gallon, three foot on center plantings and they don't survive, the next people are going to be responsible and it's not under notice and it will never happen. And they'll be put in and be dead and that'll be the end of it. That's, that's another good point. Thanks. That was on my... Valid concern. Yeah. You know, because, I mean, it could sit on the market for, uh, who knows? And that really shouldn't be in our purview, <coughs> but the quality and the integrity of the plants over a three-year period, um, under notice, we do have control over it. In an RDA, we do not. It, if they never plant them, we will never know. So maybe I will retract. You made the motion, am I correct? So yeah. We'll, well I'll go will, down the board and see how it feels. Motion. Steve? Somebody who ever seconded it would have to withdraw that. No, we could. Yeah. So I'll, I'll uh, No, but we no. want to see how the rest Hold of the on. board feels. Yeah, we'll give a new motion to uh, not de deny Cor the project or make it a negative. Well, Courtney, let everybody talk before you decide to start withdrawing motions or anything, and I'll talk you through it. Steve, you're up. Well, the reason I spoke earlier was because it made more sense to me to just <laughs> either be positive or negative and move forward okay. with the entire project. And I would prefer that we, I can't review this plan. Unfortunately, my eyes aren't good enough to, to, to not, and the documentation we would receive under a notice would, would That's you know, fine. Would be, right. make so it far clearer to me what, what mm -hmm. the proposed work is. Uh, I agree with Steve that it should be all positive or all negative. Kevin. Um, I would agree with that. I would just hope that uh, in responding, uh, there isn't quite the need to go into the, uh, you know, I, I thought I thought it was going to break my iPad when I got the email today. <laughs> Well, I think this appears to be somewhat of a contentious issue, but uh, 
I, I agree there's not enough documentation here to really see what they're doing in terms of replanting, in terms of the so-called path, mm -hmm. even whatever clearing is necessary to put this fence in. I think we need more, certainly more documentation to assess it, whether it be a notice of intent or a, a continued RDA with a little more information to, to so we can see what's coming up here. I'm not sure it's necessary to go through a notice of intent myself, but again, I, I can't tell from what we've got here. So I certainly can't approve it right now either way. I would, I would think it should be continued and get some information on what the project totally entails. Unfortunately, the applicant's representative is not here, so we can't continue it. So you would just issue a positive yeah. or a negative. Yeah. At this point, I mean, we don't, unless there's someone here representing the Georges, nope, then we'd have to do a negative or a positive. And then if they wanted to reapply under a notice of intent with more information, they have that right. Okay. So okay. you're going to withdraw your motion? I've withdrawn my motion. I withdraw my second. Did you want to? I'll make a new motion to issue. Hold on. I'll move a positive. Do you have that, Susan? The withdrawn? Yes. Okay. All right. So your motion is? That we have, um, make a positive determination on this RDA application. Second. Across the board. Okay. That's the total extent of the application. Is that right? Correct. The entire application. Entire application would be a positive. Okay. Okay. We have a motion on the table. We have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Next up, Lynn Horsley, 54, Pheasant Lane. And this was continued to October 6th, if I remember my writing. October 11th. See? Right there, yeah. Making sure you're still with me. I am. I'm almost asleep, but it's okay. Yeah. Well, I woke I'll up. try to liven things up a bit here. Next up, King Khan, 434 Seacoast Shores Boulevard, East Falmouth, Mass. For permission to maintain a licensed seawall within the existing footprint, all work to be done by hand. Yes, Mr. Chairman, we were recommending a negative two into the state and the bylaw with the resource area boundaries not confirmed. So move a second. We have a motion and a second. Any comment? Hearing none, call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. The uh, uh, fine print. All hearings of the Family Conservation Commission are held simultaneously under the authorities of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and the Falmouth Wetlands Bylaw. Although a single decision of the, of the commission is issued, it represents a separate decision under each authority. First up, James Clements, 11 Sandy Lane, East Falmouth, Mass, for permission to raise R-A-Z-E the existing dwelling and construct a single family two bedroom house with a covered patio, install a new curb stop and water service, retaining wall, Title V sewage disposal system, utilities, dry wells, and the associated clearing, excavating, uh, grading, and landscaping. Again? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I have a few questions. I'll just save my questions till after Tom's presentation. Okay. Mr. Bunker, you're up. Okay, thank you for the record. I'm Tom Bunker, BSS Design. I'm looking for my plan. And I would prepare this plan for James, James Clements, the Sandy Lanes and Pinecrest Beach area. It's a small lot that's 100% within the zone A of Jenkins Pond. Jenkins Pond is a freshwater uh, water body. The BVW surrounding that, uh, the 
Palm Vision is zone two, the VBW therefore has a 100 foot zone A, <coughs> which puts the entire property in that zone A of, of the pond and its uh, inland bank BVW. Have a uh, small two bedroom house on the property with, uh, never actually got a, a septic uh, you know, inspection, but the septic system is down down in that yard near the, near the pond, the old cesspool, uh, which she says is mainly dry, but it's probably just it's very sandy there. Um, <coughs> It's, it's, you know, an old house, an old site, uh, no real lawn to speak of. Um, some trees that probably died, died of old age through there. Um, they're proposing to replace the house in the same footprint, same size, same number of bedrooms. The only real difference going on here is that we're, uh, replacing the septic system. As you see on the existing conditions plan, we have its existing conditions and demolition. So this area here, all the excess through it, there are a number of trees between the house and the road. It's the only location where you can put the septic system, the, the best location to put the septic system as far as distance from the water body. <coughs> so that area will get cleared, unfortunately cleared of vegetation. Um, the house, uh, well, clear the vegetation and then to uh, uh, maintain, conform to Falmouth health regulations, you need 10 feet of clearance between the groundwater and the bottom of the system. So this area uh, between the house and the road, there's a shower retaining wall in there, that area must be filled. So it's, it's level with the, it's level with the, the uh, the easterly sideline here, but a level area in, in, in there in front instead of a sloping area, so we get the septic system high enough, and then that retaining wall will hold that soil from you know spilling over the uh, entry of the house, which would be at this lower level where there's now steps going up, and now there's a, an entry here, doors and, and stairs on the inside, and. Uh, it is getting a little higher. There are now some steps on the back side. The house is being lifted because the septic system area has to be filled. So those steps uh, on the pond side would be uh, several treads longer. It's running parallel to the pond, so it's not getting any closer to the pond. It's 16 feet from the inland bank, the uh, you know, existing and proposed Septic system, uh, leaching area is 55 feet, uh, basically under the health regulation, to keep it at least 50 feet. Um, so this area will revegetate between the house and the road as much as possible, obviously not right on top of the SIS the absorption system. We'll plant native trees and pines and red maple, tupelo in that area as much as we can in there. The uh, leaching area is about 240 square feet, so uh, you should have a uh, plan with a revision dated September 20th uh, last week, where it added a uh, planting area down here to replace in kind the uh, vegetation that can't be put back, uh, about 240 square feet of it, can't be put back over the SIS, so we're putting it down there in a better location close to the pond. Sure. So between the, uh, the house and the same size and location, septic system upgrade, uh, increasing in vertical and horizontal separation from the pond, and some of this uh, vegetation being replaced down by the pond, we feel that this is uh, the, uh, an improvement overall to the site. see to uh, approve it and I'll uh, take any questions. A uh, couple things, Tom. One is I know in the narrative or on the plan, one of the two, that you say there's no increase in impervious surface on the lot. 
Right. Correct? Yes. Next time, can you put a table on? I have your lot coverage by structures. Am I missing your table? Is it on your new one? No. No. Okay. Next time. Because I would love to trust you, Tom. I really would. But you know I can't. And it's not you. It's not you personally. Um, and yes. the only other thing, and explain to me that that darker gray, that's the wall that's going from the house to the road? Yes. Yeah, that's the wall. Okay. And what's the elevation of that wall? Once again, sorry, Tom. It's uh, 34. And what, so how high is it? So I got 34. Well, the 32 from Sandy Lane crosses over right there. So right at that point, it's, it's two feet high. Uh, it does get actually down at six feet. I think I have. We're going at six feet at some point? Um, thought I had. It, 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 That's it a big have one. to have a railing on it. Thought I had a note that I have to have a railing on it. Okay, because that's kind of a tall wall um, at that end. Is there parking? And if you said <coughs> that and I missed it, I'm sorry. There's no they, currently, they park in the layout of Sandy Lane. There's, there's no parking. There's a fence. Yep. The edge of gravel and the fence. There's there's no real no parking. They just pull up on the road. And they're going to continue to do that. Just out of curiosity, is that allowed, Tom, if it's a private road? Like they don't have to have parking? On, uh, well, so out there it's never been enforced on a private road. That wasn't my question. <laughs> well, just going through it on a, on a private road. I mean, I'm not, I'm not sure if you are required to have a parking space on that. I, I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure if it was a zoning thing or anything like that. I, I just didn't know. It was uh, more out of curiosity. Okay. For a public road, I think there there's generally not on street parking. I think it generally is not allowed. Okay. Uh, but on a private road, I guess it would be up to the abutters if they care. Okay. Okay. Um, and the plantings that you have next to the proposed septic system, what are those again? Three vegetate with native trees, four white pine, four red maple or tupelo, and native shrubs. Are you really going to be able to put the trees right next to that soil absorption system? Maury? Well, it's in I'm the, not thinking Maury's too confident there. It's in, it's in the sand fill. Um, I mean, next to where that, you know. I would rather see the trees go. Close, yeah, closer pond. to the pond. Yeah, closer to the pond. I just think, you know, it's just going to eventually damage the system, isn't it? I don't, I don't think so because, I mean, that stone around it is dry. I think it'll generally root prune. I don't think it'll... The roots will go down. I mean, there'll be an interface between the... the okay, they can discuss the whether or not they want you to move the trees closer to the pond. I don't think it's something we really need to beat right now. So you may just see a, a condition where we move those closer to the pond, okay? okay. All right, thanks, Tom. Oh, and next time, mitigation chart on your plan. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Tom. What's up? Yes. Mark, um, your plan shows a dock on the property. Oh, yeah. Just sort of to the That's north cool. of this new planting? Yeah. So, so is that path, is the path going to be fixed up a little bit or make sure nobody decides to wander through the planting to get down to the dock? Hints that there's a this little thing here? Yes. Absolutely. Well, we have, I mean, the planting's in here and, and there's a potential lift will open there. For, I mean, it's not much of a dock. I mean, it's a little, doesn't look like it. Well, it's kind of almost like a pallet <laughs> with a little stuff on it there. Um, so there's still access to get down to it around this place yes. without having to make a path to the planting. 
As long as that floor is high, uh, the proposed floor is high enough. That Chained at 36, so. Yeah. Two feet up. Okay. Peter. Uh, I have a question. I'm, I'm looking at a drawing last <coughs> revised, August 30th, and it doesn't show the area of the plantings that you have marked in green. Uh, it, it's that an sure, omission or do I? It was submitted last week. Mine doesn't show it either. I got so two did copies. submit it last week. Did you guys get well, new well, plans in your pocket? I got two sets of plans. They're both the same. Okay. Both. Nope. This one has them right there. It should be you the have revised. the revision oh. September 20th. Oh, Mark has okay. the revision. Okay. Peter, okay. You Good. don't have the right plan in front of you. Okay, so it, this is a... Yeah, it should have a revision date like that. Okay. Sorry okay. about that. Okay. No further questions? All right. Good point. So, Tom, I think what we're all having a little problem with is our top page has a revision correction for September 5th, but the second sheet... Yeah, you don't have the revised. Right, and I don't have. So we don't. We have the revision for September fifth, but we don't have the little planting well, some area. Of you, <coughs> some, some of us don't. don't. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, it's fine. I, I have. That middle oh. page might have been uh, short change. Yeah. I don't have. Am I up? Yes, you are. Oh, okay. You're, I'm allowed to usually. You could skip me to get home earlier. <laughs> um, the, 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 I, I cheated. I looked at his sheet. Um, six foot wall. So is that going to be engineered? Or is it a poured wall? What is it? It's that. Um, <laughs> I'd, have, I'd have to. It's, it's the what's that? ready rock. So big blocks. Okay. In the future? Only because anything over four feet is required to be engineered. Mm. So whether whatever it is, just submit it with the plan so we know. And it's not so much for us; it's for whoever is constructing it that it's done according to the specs, um, because then it will hold. Because it's holding basically a septic system back. And when you go to <laughs> board of health, they might want to make sure you have that. So have it for them yeah. at least. It's not so much for us as it is for the septic system. And these are the blocks that are 28 inches deep. They weigh 1,200 yep. pounds each. Yeah, but we don't know that. Well, I believe they us. provide a standard engineered specs. They do. For those. But it would be nice, you know, to just have it submit here, it. to submit it. Um, and then it would alleviate that little gray blonde thing that I have. Um, blonde gray thing, whatever. Um, strip out material. Um, are you hauling it all off, or are you using it somewhere on the site? Okay. Going away. So I see your limit of work is quite generous to the west, uh, to the east. So is that where you might be stockpiling or doing stuff? And if that's the case, due to the topography of this lot, I would highly recommend, and we'll probably condition that you double stake it, or at least you have, um, you know, some kind of back up when it rains so they can throw it down yeah the I'm not I'm not anticipating that they would stockpile they're just gonna haul it out I would, I would well, we'll so. condition it that it gets hauled out yeah and I, that I way there I don't think there's enough room to, to stockpile well there isn't any room. room that's why I'm worried but over to the eastern there you where it says you know covered patio and all that wording that looks like a really nice place to put stuff and I just don't want it to run down the hill um, the last thing is you have in your narrative or somewhere that those the 16 inch and the 20 inch oak um, will be 
saved if possible, depending on how the contractor feels. I don't think we're going to give the contractor that liberty. They're going to be saved. Um, you're already cutting down enough of them in the, for the SAS that those two can be maneuvered around, I'm sure. So the 16 and the 20, where it says save trees and deem practical by contractor, he will not have any choice. They will be saved. Um, the, as far as the trees in the septic area, um, Tom, um, roots seek water. Effluent is water, and they will go there. So I would rather see those trees maybe in that east area closer to the resource area than on top of the septic system and I don't know if all those components are H20 because the tank is only an H10 but I believe that the infiltrate the, uh, the concrete, chambers, are, the chambers, the chambers are, are H20s so that if they ever did have to park there they then the trees aren't going to be an impediment so that um, we'll probably condition that those trees that you would propose will be in the you know closer to the resource area than up on top of the and other than that, um, well, I think they can go somewhat in that. I mean, there's a bit, there's a five foot strip out or some of that, but I think they can do okay in some of that replacement sand. I know trees go to water, but of course, in this size system, the water generally goes down, it's not out the sides. And, and the sand fill will be moister than the rock fill around the chamber, so yep. the roots will go down yeah. through the sand, which is moisture, and, and yeah. to find the moisture, yeah. rather than going horizontally through all the dry rock. All right, other than that, thank you. Um, I'm just scaling off the stairs and landing that you have on the water side of your proposed house. You show is 16 feet at the nearest point, and on uh, existing conditions, um, you don't show an offset. Right. To, and I presume it's the same or less. That's that's the same, and it was okay. uh, had it on there once. It was. And while I'm a bird, if I were a tree, I would love to be nice and close to that bleach field. The same reasons that Jan and the roots are just gonna love that thing. So I'd like to see those trees go somewhere else. And then, then you also have the option of using that as a parking area, use for private the people who have jurisdiction over the private way decide they don't want you parking on the street. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that. The guy does. I mean, he wants he wants to revegetate that. He wants his privacy. No, I, I, I think, like you know, that's fine, but, you know. Maybe with shrubs, but not trees, Tom. Some shallow rooted shrubs would be, do, that, that'd be fine, but. And I'm only saying that because we've had a couple of systems that I know of that have been damaged by vegetation that were, you know. Actually, I should have been the stairway proposed years ago when I first started and you know people like oh we need mitigation area we'll plant over the uh, and not you you know just other um, plants that I've seen and you know people are like well my septic system was damaged and they had to replace it so, so we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it yeah, I okay I, I do have one quick thing that Maury brought up only one part of the comp only one part of the systems in H20 Maury yes just the, the chambers, the leach chambers. The, the, the tank is an inch ten. Inch ten, because it's within, ten. it's outside of the ten foot of the driveway. Oh, I see it. I see it. So okay, yeah. so they wouldn't be parking over there. All right, got yeah. it. They're okay. twenty feet away. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's a pleasure. You can condition oh, the trees. Yeah, we can condition all that. I'll close the hearing and take it under advisement. Don't, don't, don't. Yeah. don't worry. Uh, we have a motion to second. No comment. Comments from the public. Oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> I have my notes. I'm Gina Spasalo, and I live at 16 Sandy Lane actually at the bottom of the, at the circle. 
is the how James is on the left and I'm, I'm in the middle. Okay. But anyways, um, my concern is no driveway because right now that house has been a summer house and there's no, you know, in the winter with the snow removal, my husband has had a medical issues and we've had ambulances come down. I'm nervous about cars being parked in that circle and not being able to, you know, have people come down and, you know, get the snow removal and all. So that's one thing. Um, the parking in the summer is horrendous, you know, because when these houses were built, it was, it, everybody had one car to a house, but now everybody in these homes have, each have their car. So there's more than one car for each house. Um, I'm nervous. Um, the roadway is in poor shape now, especially down at the bottom, and I'm worried about what the construction vehicles are going to, you know, the damage they're going to do to that roadway. Um, and another thing, if there's like um, a dumpster or anything, would that be put on his land, on uh, you know, any construction vehicles that have to stay overnight? Would they be put on his land and not left in that circle? You know. I think that's a safe assumption. I mean, but it's the, the it's the parking, like the driveway that really is a big concern, especially, like I say now, what if, you know, he rents it and there's a lot of cars there? You know, it's a small circle, it's a dead end, a steep hill. Plows hate to come down in it because it's icy in the winter, steep. So those are my concerns. Duly um, noted. Thank you. Okay. Are you good? 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 Um, next door at 5 Sandy Lane. Um, I want to reiterate her concern about parking in the circle. Right now, there's a fence there that um, goes over the certain into the circle, so the circle isn't even the full diameter. And two years ago, I believe it was two years ago, her husband had a medical emergency and the emergency vehicles were held up about 20 minutes trying to get vehicles down into the circle. So I think it's very important to have that circle constituted the full dimensions <coughs> and that there should be designated parking on his property as opposed to in the circle where it would be blocking traffic. Um, several other things. The um, gentleman mentioned that the septic system or the leaching field is 240 square feet. Looking at the plan, it looks like it's about 10 feet long and maybe about 8 feet wide. So unless I'm misunderstanding the diagram, that works out to about 80 square feet. And we're asking for six separate variances of setbacks. The road from the foundation, from the um, sidelines, from the pond. Um, the lot itself is very low, and some areas of the lot is probably only two feet above the water. <coughs> the area to the left of the proposed build building right now is uh, a dirt clay mixture, no vegetation. It is not pervious, it is in basically impervious from being walked on and tromped on for 50, 60 years. Um, that dock that somebody mentioned is not a dock, it's a raft that is floating to the shore. 
and uses as a dock. Um, the trees I, he has proposed planting four or replacing four pine and four maple. It does not say what size trees. It's my understanding that there's a ratio if you remove 50 inches of diameter of trees, you have to replace 15 inches. Now, I don't know if you're removing nine trees, so I suspect that it's in well in excess of 50 inches. But they don't specify how many, how many, excuse me, what size trees they're going to use for the mitigation. Also, that whole area in, where the septic system is going to be stripped. And it's a fairly sizable area. And based on what I did my addition next door, they had a three to one ratio. If you took out one foot, you had to redo three feet. That whole area to the left of the building is ideal for mitigation for trees. Curious. And makes a lot more sense than trying to squeeze something next to the house. Um, basically, they like to leave 10 feet around the house clear. Um, I don't. I don't feel looking at it that the septic system is adequate for the property and will be endangering the pond. Also, a lot of water comes down that lane when it rains. It comes down on one side, crosses over to the uh, applicant's side of the uh, road, right at the septic, proposed septic system. And when you have a heavy rain, it's almost like a river going down into that septic, will go down into that septic system. I guess that's all I have. Thank you. Ms. McKay. Mr. Chairman, I have one comment regarding the road and then one question for Tom. Unfortunately, Sandy Lane is a private way. Um, depending on how the deed is written, the property owners in that area may or may not own to that center line. So this board doesn't have any jurisdiction saying you can't park on the road. So I, I understand it's a concern. Um, unfortunately, this board can't address that concern. I don't know if there is a board out there that could, fire um, but that fire department. Fire department building. Yeah, so building I would check with the building department and the fire department regarding the road, the road yeah. use. Okay, unfortunately, they can't, uh, they can't condition the project for that. That's, but we did ask the question. Second of all, regarding the water coming down Sandy Lane, Tom, in the first plan you showed us, in the first plan you gave us, which I have, your page two showed a grade change, and it doesn't show that same grade change on your revised it's same, plan. It's the same grade change. It's one of the. But why isn't it on the other, the revised September twentieth plan? One of the problems sometimes with AutoCAD when the layer gets turned off. Kind of like your mitigation thing? Well, uh, mitigation. Uh, <laughs> I'm just teasing you, John. Can you put a revised plan? Yes, and I have that noted already. To yeah, to, to, to get the great. And if you had already addressed that, my apologies, Tom. No. Okay. After hearing the, can I, through you, Mr. Chair? Sure. After hearing the testimony from the, app, the uh, neighbors, um, I think it's just going to reiterate that the trees get planted to that east side um, to allow for parking just because you might need it. And also you might rethink for the couple hundred dollars or three hundred dollars extra for an H10 tank to an H20 because now if there, are, is, if there is parking in that area over the leach field, which probably will happen. Um, or should happen, um, then you've covered yourself with the Board of Health and with us um, for any damage to, to that tank. Um, 
and I think that would be prudent. Yeah. And now, I know this is a Board of Health question, probably, but don't all plans have to be designed for three bedroom, or can you design to two bedroom? Without, is that deed restricted now? Deed restriction. It will be deed restricted to two bedroom. All right, it's, it's not possible to put three bedrooms on this property. Okay, where, is, where is the old system? He said it's down, down in the lower area, down, he said down, is it on? Is it on the plan? So it's not shown. He actually just told me today when I was talking on the phone. No, it's it's down, down, down in the yeah, lower it looked, area. It, was like, it looked like it was to the east side there, but I, it needs to be located, Tom, because if it's a cesspool, it needs to be pumped and filled, um, and especially if you're going to be exactly. digging holes for trees and whatever. Um, it, it's a cesspool. Okay, so you will have to locate that. Yes. And that will be in the conditions that you locate the septic. And Tom, you might as well just locate the septic before you put the revised plan in with the grade change, <coughs> so you don't have to put right. and five grade change in the H20 tank. But that'll be conditional. No, yeah, it'll all be conditional. Yeah. But if you're going to put the revised in, put the trees over, put the H20, show a successful, and the grade change. Yeah, I got that. Mm. We don't need to continue with our revised plan, do we? No, not for the grain change of the cesspool. You'll condition the tree movement. You'll talk about that dock. The dock is a whole another can of worms. Yeah. The tank, we can condition. That's an H20 load. And Tommy, the deed restriction. Um, would you have to, you'll have to file a deed restriction with this property? Is that how it works with the Board of Health? Uh, probably either through the Board of Health or Board of Appeals, they will require that. Okay, so we'll just condition that you put a copy of that, you supply us a copy of the deed restriction. You know, we're up to like seven things right now. I think this needs a continuance at this point. I'm not, I mean, maybe yes. the rest of the board not, but we're at an H20 tank, tree location, septic location, wall detail for an engineered wall. Wall detail is the one I forgot. Uh, grade change, you know, I, I just, usually it's like something simple that you just have to give us a, a little tweak. And the grade change was already on there. It just needs to be turned back on. So free. <laughs> <laughs> it's her. I'm sorry, but um, that, I mean we're we're up to six things for a revised a revision on a plan, and not that we don't trust you, Tom. But it's a it, before, right? <laughs> no, that wasn't aimed at you. But it is an, an awful lot to ask because we ask. More Tom, you're for coming less. on the fourth anyway. I mean, wait a minute, you're coming on the eleventh. Right? You have 58 Cape Cotter Road, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so do you want to just come back with the continued then? I'll, I'll request the continuance until we allow to. All right, then we have to. Do you have to redo your. We have to. You have to. Before. Withdraw so your. Before. No, you, you, had, you, you had a motion. Okay. Before you have the second. Okay. Then I withdraw my motion to close. I will withdraw my second. Now I make a motion to continue till October 11th. Second. Okay. We have a motion. A question. A second for a continuance. Any further discussion? Thank you. Uh, getting back to Morris' point about the trees not to, to be saved, the trees are in the right way. And we have an issue with, with the width of the right of way for access. I, I'm just curious, the measurements are from the edge of pavement, but the actual right road of way, layout. what? Yeah, the road layout is, they're in the road layout. Right. Correct. But like in front of my house, I can't plant a tree in the, well, I have a public tree. I, I understand that's different, but we. What it, trees these, are you talking about? Oh, got it, got it, got it, got it, yeah. Two I see. oaks, if they weren't there, the street, an emergency vehicle or whatever, assuming that's, I don't remember what the quality of the yeah, it's not, edge it's is. Not right. But it would make the access to the cul-de-sac better. better. Yeah. So, oh, I have it. 
on those. I, I didn't know. I will die on that hill. Okay, I didn't know whether that was within our purview or not. It was just, just seemed to be a practical matter. I, I agree with the continuance, but I was just curious about the trees okay. and the right away. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion from the board? Mark? Regarding that apparent dock, which apparently is not a dock or just a float that's dragged up, I don't know if you know what the story is there, but we certainly don't want people dragging floats up onto the shore indiscriminately. Uh, I don't know it should probably is. be permanent or dragged out of there and thrown away. Right? Inform your client of that, Tom. Thank you. Thank you. Because that will probably come up so in some sort of condition. Any more comments? started off that the new structure would be the same size as the existing structure. Okay. It will have the same footprint. However, the existing structure is about 15 feet high with no basement. Mm -hmm. The old structure will be 26 feet high with a full lower level walkout as well as a full first mm -hmm. floor. We look at the footprint, Mr. Zwibble, so we look at a bird's eye view. Okay. The Board of Health will look at that, though, for habitable space. Is there a way to restrict habitable, I mean... Well, they do. The we, don't. Oh. we don't. We don't. They, when, the board, when it comes to the Board of Health, it's going to be restricted to two bedroom, and no rooms can be considered a bedroom if it's deed restricted at two bedroom, and that would be a Board of Health issue. Okay, we have a motion and a second to continue until October 11th. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? No. Thank you, Tom. Yes. Yeah. I need a thingy, though. Hang on. A thingy? Oh, wait. I'm good. <coughs> Okay. Come on, fine. You guys can go. I'll figure this out. Next up, Bruno. Courtney wants to go home and watch the Gallinelli. Gallinelli. Yes. 117, Surf Dry, Collin Mass. I believe this has been read in, but you can read it anyway. I will. For permission to raise R A C E, the existing dwelling and structure, new single family house with attached garage, porches, deck, with stairs, patio. Ring station, utilities, dry wells, driveway, and the associated clearing, excavated, grading, and landscaping. Mr. Mr. Chairman, just for the record, the quorum is not me. Mark, Steve, Mark. Jamie, Betsy, R.A. Courtney, Peter, Kevin. I don't think Mark, I'm on it, Mark, I can it at Steve, Jamie. We get Courtney, Peter, and Kevin, no more, and then Betsy and Mary aren't here, so. Oh, Mary. Yeah. Because Mary, yeah. I came in at 7.30. How are you doing with your notes over there, Steve? Excuse me? Good? Huh? With the notes? Yeah, Thank you. I'm okay. okay. It's the gentleman on the board. Thank you. Mr. Costa, you're up. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. For the record, Matt Costa, Cape and Islands Engineering. Representing the applicant together with Kevin Clower, uh, who's also here tonight, and the applicant Bruno. Uh, I always put you in the last name. Uh, is also here. Uh, we submitted revised plans uh, that show on sheet four or five the area to be enclosed with breakaway panels. Uh, after the last hearing, <coughs> The applicant went back with this builder and took a look at the plans and further uh, made further revisions to um, further reduce the area to be enclosed by uh, these breakaway panels. Uh, we, we reduced it by another 11%. So 
So the total area to be enclosed now is 989 square feet, or 998 square feet. Um, that equates to a total of 57% reduction from the um, area of structure. Uh, there's solid wall structure uh, located below the base flood elevation for velocity zone. So to recap, what we've done for this project is we've taken a legally existing structure that has 2,327 square feet of solid wall uh, foundation and living area located below the base flood elevation for a velocity zone. Um, and we designed a new structure that is compliant with building code standards for construction in a velocity zone that will have all habitable space elevated two feet above the base flood elevation for the velocity zone. The structure will be supported by a pile um, foundation. Uh, there will be a small area that is enclosed with breakaway panels um, that will house uh, garage space and access to a uh, stairway elevator um, area. Uh, so this is a substantial improvement. Um, what we're charged with is telling you how we overcome the presumption that breakaway panels will have an adverse impact on the adjacent resource area values. <coughs> By virtue of the fact that we've taken a legally existing structure uh, and reduced the area uh, that is enclosed within the base flood elevation for the velocity zone by 57%, and furthermore reduced that type of construction or, or not reduced, but change that type of construction to construction that is compliant with building code standards. Um, it's evident that this is a substantial improvement. Therefore, the presumption uh, has been overcome, and we believe that this project is worthy of your approval. Uh, Kevin has uh, articulated um, this this position and has also included some other uh, cases. Uh, recent cases similar to the pro this project that you have approved. And uh, he's going to just take a minute to uh, run through that letter with you. And then we'd be happy to answer any questions. Um, Good evening. For the record, my name is Kevin Clower. I'm an attorney here in Falmouth. And I represent uh, the applicant, Bruno Gallinelli, in this matter. Um, as Matt, Matt went over, he, he hit a lot of the uh, notes that I, I set forth in a letter that was submitted to you last week. Uh, I'm not going to waste the board's time by, by reading that letter verbatim or going over the details of the letter in specifics. But I did want to hit a highlight, which was that this project is, is very similar to uh, a number of similar projects that this commission has considered and approved, uh, which all have all allowed breakaway panels. The common thread of the approval of the approved projects was that they were for raising rebuilds of existing structures. The commission included a number of what I thought were very important findings in these orders. Uh, the project at 189 Surf Drive, the commission found that the proposal was reducing the square footage of enclosed space on the lot from its present condition. At 25 Moses Road, they found that reconstruction of the existing house will better protect the resource area values by being constructed to new and more stringent building code standards. Given the project's reconstruction of an existing house, the commission will approve the use of breakaway walls in the construction. 374 Mill Road, they found that the proposed project will be an improvement over the existing conditions because of updated requirements and structures located within a velocity zone. This project is completely analogous to those, to those applications. It's an existing structure that's being improved by the proposed. The applicant took, uh, took the board's uh, commission's con concerns into consideration and sought to address those as best they could. The proposed area is only the area of the garage, the stairwell, and the elevator, and it, is, it constitutes a significant improvement over what exists today uh, in line with the conditions that the board had found for approval on other similar projects. Other than that, the position, uh, our position and, and our, our arguments have been laid out in, in the letter, and, and I don't want to uh, take up any more time unless you have any questions, which would be happy to address. Thank you. Uh, 
And Mr. Gallinelli did want to uh, uh, say a few words as well. Good evening. My name is Bruno Gallinelli, and I'm uh, just here to introduce myself. I just want this uh, distinguished uh, you know that this is not going to be a spec home. This is going to be our home, our large family, three nice kids and six beautiful grandkids and more coming. We love Falmouth. It's been my first very marathon in 1993, and I've been back every year. All my family is running last weekend of October, half marathon and marathon. We just want to be part of this town, the family oriented, and it's a beautiful uh, neighborhood. So, we have addressed the uh, plan with a lot of improvements. We are very conscientious about the size, setting back from the uh, sensitive area. We made uh, the lot conform to the neighbors, so this was a non-conforming lot before when I bought it. And we made everything possible to please the conformity of it. Just uh, help me out, become a dream come true to move to Falmouth. Thank you for understanding. Thank you, sir. John? Either whoever can speak to, I'm going to assume it's going to be you, Mark, on the Longfellow plan. I'm looking at pay the ground floor plan. You're basically telling me that, and for the record, for the, I don't know, probably hundred thousandth time I've said this, I'm not a fan of breakaway panels. You all know that's nothing personal, guys, but I don't like them. So, uh, we, we all Mark, know it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we know this already. We know this. So, I'm not, I'm not going to... Um, support their use except in the most minimal way anyway uh, the ground floor plan um, I'm looking at so I see the door I see these little boxes I see the gray which is your breakaway panel the gray outline correct anybody somebody there we go. Yeah, for the record, I'm Mark Pagosian with Long Photos. Thanks, think. Mark. So the little, the little boxes. Do you mean what little, the breakaway panel is I see, I see the, come here. I'll show you what I mean. What are these? Oh, that would just be, their openings. That's where, that's where the door, that's where the door would come up. Okay, that's where the garage door would come up. Maybe out. you could hold it up so we can all see so this. So that's not just where the car would be parked. That's just the garage door. Right. That's, that's just the garage, garage door. door. That's whatever come up. Got door. it. Okay. So. <laughs> okay. So again, all I would support as staff would possibly be opening up this garage, having your doorway entry, and coming up into your stairway and elevator. Uh, very similar to my stance, uh, almost my stance on every one of these projects, but particularly kind of like we, what we just did on Nashua. Um, that's all I have to say, Mr. Chairman. And thank you guys. I'm looking at the little boxes going, is that where the car is going to be parked? So thanks. Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. <laughs> I can reach you with this. No, I, um, I, I have a little heartburn about the breakaway panel. So obviously you've got to have, um, you've got to enclose the elevator. The stairs make logical sense. Uh, you include in, in an enclosed area, you know, a chase for utilities and so on. But I don't see any need to enclose where the garages are. That's mine. I don't have any comment. No questions? No questions. Mark? Yeah, can you tell us what's on the uh, floor of the garage? Is that concrete or gravel? That'll be concrete. So, so port slab. Port slab. Thank you. 
That's all. So, what are we looking for? A continuance to revise the plan for the panels, or? Um, I mean, that's that's the commit. I mean, that's your staff's stance on breakaway panels. I mean, the board can do what they'd like. You can condition it. You can request a continuance. The applicant may or may not want to continue. You need to ask them. Or if they choose to close it, then you can deliberate and condition at that time. Um, we want a motion on a second before we open it to the public, no? Correct. So, we have a motion? What? What are we doing? Continuing or are we closing? Well, you can't continue unless the applicant uh, agrees to a continuance, guys. So if the a you should ask the applicant whether or not they would like to revise their plan to address the staff's concern or if they want to close the hearing and allow the board to deliberate the breakaway panel issue. Uh, we feel that we've given the board, uh, the commission, uh, more than sufficient uh, evidence of the, over the overcoming of the presumption of adverse effects um, so that the commission could clearly approve this with breakaway panels in line with other approved projects that this same commission has approved uh, in very similar circumstances. So we would not be looking for a continuance at this time. You told I'm sorry. We would not be looking for a continuance. Okay. 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 We have a motion to close by Courtney. Courtney. We have a second. Second. Steve. Okay. Any more comments from the board? Public. Good evening, Mr. Matthews. Good evening, Commission. Uh, as you remember, I spoke at the last uh, hearing on this subject. I'm the, I own, my sister and I own the abutting dwelling. Sir, uh, can you state your name for the record, please? Henry Herman, H E R R M A N. My sister and I own Thank the you, sir. house at 109 Swift Drive, which is the immediate abutting residence on the corner of Bywater Court and Swift Drive. Uh, I, uh, what I am saying now is unsolicited by uh, the applicant. Uh, as uh, last time I said that I was not in any way opposing this project, and that's still my position. I'm here to speak on behalf of one or two elements of the project, which may surprise you, but I'd like to tell you what and why, if you'll indulge me. The issue of the breakaway walls and enclosing the area under the new structure. If you talk about breakaway walls, the most dangerous and uh, common breakaway walls on Surf Drive are the outside walls of the existing houses. In any kind of storm like we've seen in the Caribbean, they will break away and abandon and fly away literally in huge dangerous chunks. I think that any modern, properly engineered breakaway wall is a great uh, improvement, both for that structure and for the immediate neighborhood. Um, if you're talking about what is good for this particular vulnerable resource area, and if somebody is going to spend a lot of money building a dwelling which conforms to present uh, regulations and building codes, I think that for the quality of life, that person should be allowed to enclose as much of the area as possible. Uh, two points, garages. I don't have and cannot build, I've been told I can't, even a one car garage at my property. I'm elderly and I can tell you when the winter comes, the ice, the snow on the car, it is not fun and each year it gets more difficult. I think it's kind of unfair to a new owner who spends a lot of money building a house to have to confront any situation if he becomes a permanent rather than a summer resident, that he has to cope with the winter problems on his vehicle. It's just a matter of quality of life. Two more points, if you will. One is aesthetics. I know this committee is concerned with the aesthetic overall image of this community. 
if you look at the uh, the um, aerial photos in the submission, you'll see a structure directly across the alley from this project. The number is 122 by Water Court. That's a fairly new dwelling. It's on heavy concrete pilings up to the present required height. It is totally unenclosed, and it is an eyesore. It looks like hell. It's weird. Ask any architect. You have this massive housing structure perched 12 feet off the ground with nothing there except concrete pilings. It looks like a caricature of those indigenous uh, cottages you see in the Pacific that are on stilts. <coughs> so, a house of this size, unenclosed on surf drive, is an eyesore. And last but not least, there's the wind venturi effect. I have taken wind measurements just for the fun of it. And I was at Woods Hole for four years, just um, it's one of my avocations, science, although I'm not a scientist. There's a wind venturi effect in high wind under a large unenclosed structure like that. The wind velocity is actually increased under the house, and you can see why. It's like an airfoil effect over an airplane wing. My house and my fence and the pole is very close to that. Even if there's no storm and that, prevent, that presents an immediate danger to structure, in any kind of wind, and it comes directly across, usually at that angle, from the sound, would be whistling onto that house and increasing in velocity and wind noise, believe it or not, to my house and probably to Mr. Karras's house, who's here, he has the house across the alley, the smaller one. So all I'm asking this commission to consider is A, the aesthetics, B, the quality of life issue, C, the wind venturi effect, and also, the fact that if you're talking breakaway walls, the, if you're going to build a structure like this, anything you do with modern breakaway walls is a mega improvement over current structures. Now, am I happy about this new house going up next to mine? No, because you know the human reaction is you don't want anything changing, but realistically, if there's going to be improvement for the resource area, I suggest it be a, in a fashion, and I fervently support this, that maximizes the quality of life for the owner, like garages, that minimizes the clear aesthetic impact on the community, and finally avoids Onto it, wind effects. Thank you for your time. If anybody has any questions, unless they do, I will sit down. Anyone else? Okay, we have a motion and a second. All, are you good? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Good night, gentlemen. Thank you. Order of conditions. Mm -hmm. All right. Hey, you doing? Take it outside, guys. We still have work to do. Thank you. We have order conditions. Yeah, 23. Road. That's the garage and the mitigation plantings. Uh, oh, it's everybody. Susan, I'm sorry. I'm Dave Martin got an attaboy. Yeah, Dave Martin got an attaboy. Yep. I don't have anything written on my plan. I'm it was a no proposed addition, proposed garage. And then 
Um, Bill Armstrong did the planting plant. Yes, he did. <laughs> Old school. Wow. But he did, he did a nice job. Yeah, they actually came to meet with me before they did the planting plant and everything. So. Makes life easier, doesn't it? Mm hmm. Makes life a lot easier. That's how they got the attaboy. All right. So I'll move to uh, accept the order as discussed. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Why would they be? It's so nice when you get those. Honestly. It's like one in a million. Well, I asked it nicely the first time. Same formula. Yes. Uh, two in a row. Here we okay, go. Okay, we have. And I think Mike Borsell had an attaboy on this one, too. I know, uh, uh, Raul did. Yeah, I don't have anything special on there. Um, kind of got dry. It was pretty straightforward. Okay. No red pen on that one either. Wow. It was just repairing the seawall. Yep. Yeah. And they moved and the more in moving the pa patio and the portion of the stairs. Actually, no, that all that was done. This was just the... Um, he was just doing the um, seawall. Seawall. Yeah. Replacing it. Yeah. Instead of repairing it, they're going to exactly. replace it. Yeah. Jen, was that a license float? Yep, yeah, it is. License number yeah. 14215. Excellent. Um, to accept it as discussed. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Before anybody jumps to the next one, I want to ask under other business, can we put on a future agenda a, um, a discussion for two night systems and breakaway panels policy? Yes, because we've already asked for the D night, and I think Mike McGrath and the Board of Health and uh, CRAC and not CRAC, uh, Coastal Zone Management. Right. Um, the water Coastal. quality, the water quality people see a carpalus and Valley yep. Ailer and them. They all would like to do it. So that would be a great night to do the breakaway, add the breakaway panel. And maybe even the recommend to the engineers that they don't have to do three gallon, three foot on center if they would like to think outside the box and plant some vegetation, yeah. better vegetated buffers. Okay. Let me look at your schedule. It's been light uh, for the next couple of weeks. You are looking like you're getting busier. Um, can't do it on the 10th, but maybe let me well, see what I can do towards the end of October, early November, and we'll just block one night yeah. that we can just actually just talk about it. Yeah, like you said, some night that's light so that... Even that, or we'll just block a night off. Yeah. I mean, we Before can do that as well. Beginning of November. When's town meeting? Town meeting is the beginning of November. See, that's what it is. I mean, you yeah. do, we did take the 18th off for like we have no meeting scheduled, no hearing scheduled, but we could do a meeting if you wanted to talk about things. Um, the 18th of October or is November. November? Yeah, oh. the town meeting, she doesn't have it on uh, here, but town meeting, we don't have a hearing. No, town a, meeting is what, the 15th or the 8th? I thought it was the 8th. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, no. Meaning. So, um, let me let me talk to Mary and Jamie. I can talk to you. I think the I think the discussion for the D night is appropriate. I think the breakaway panel. We always grapple with it, and well, just yeah, for the rest of the board doesn't a, know. Some form of a protocol. I mean, it's never going to be perfect. I get it, but but if we could have some semblance of well, you just have to put it in your regulations. You, we know they have to enclose the elevators. We know they have to enclose right. the staircases. But, but the garages that, and everything. you know, they could read and it would. Then that would require a change to your reg. To put it in, because right now your regs just say anything other than open columns is prohibited. So it kind of leaves this gray area like what is an open column? Do the breakaway panels constitute that? I mean, Jamie, you sit on the. Coastal Resiliency Action Committee. I mean, th this is, you know, these guys are going to, or that committee, 
you know, we'll talk about this issue too. What kind of structures do you want in these velocity zones? Look what happened to the islands. Look what happened to Florida. A breakaway panel is going to be no match for a category category three hurricane. Yeah. And yeah. what happens with the with the the breakaway panels? We are just creatures of storing. We're like little mice. We put everything in our places. So as soon as you put a wall around something, you fill it. So as soon as you have a breakaway panel, the panels work marvelously. They protect the house. Everybody fills right. the base, the, the car garage areas. So now the panels can't do this anymore. They just stationary sit there because there's a car against it, there's canoes, there's cookers, there's stuff, there's... These houses are going to more year-round houses. Where are they putting all their Christmas decorations? Oh, they, and they, they, you go in them and they, they sheetrock them. I mean, as soon as you put a wall around it, it becomes private. Yeah. And then you start to... And I think, I think the board does. I mean, we've grappled is, with this tough. for 10 years, guys. We, oh, but yeah. more than that. So I will... I will um, I'll yeah, look at the schedule good. and I will carve out a night where maybe we can just do RDAs and no notices and then we can do this discussion. I think, I think it's warranted. I think I like the vegetation and um, Should we have the town attorney uh, give us a little talk about uh, precedent issues? Uh, let's I'd say have the initial conversation first and see where you guys are headed. And I then think I we can, should because yeah. we're in a kind of fix I think. Well, no. You know, no, because then you look at the surf drive houses and we wouldn't allow them to put a kayak rack on. I don't think, so, I, I personally don't think you're in a precedent case. But they I, did. Well, some did. Many. I, I really don't. Many. Yes. I, I inspected Surf Drive and yes. found that and if we virtually were, if, all yeah. have stuff. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. I, will, I will do that. Stuff, um, one structure. other thing I want to announce is the reason that Betsy is not with you tonight is because she's being honored tonight by the Association for the Preservation of Cape Cod. Oh. She is being recognized for her um, work and dedication to the restoration of the Kunameset River. I am letting you know this. I can show you a little picture that that is why. She didn't invite us. Well, <laughs> that is why one of your consultants wasn't here I tonight and I was texting with them times. to find let them know what happened to their hearing is because she's at APCC and sent me a picture of Betsy. Um, so Betsy's being honored. So I just thought you guys for the next meeting for her ego. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she'll now you guys first. can adjourn. <laughs> we have a motion. A motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Okay.